what you got, Elliot? Anthony, how you doing today, sir? Good, good my friend. I like that uh, picture you got, the, the four-wheeler. Yeah, yeah. That was the honeymoon. Nice, was, uh, nice. So you, yeah, you're, you're, that's, a, that's a nice honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. <it laughs> On the back of a four-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, it I got sure, it. Sure. We're going hunting for our honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. It was, it was great. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Girl. What I'll you tell got? you what, sir. So this case has been on my mind for a few months and it just hasn't sat right with me. And, you know, me and including my shift mates, we'd love to hear your point of view. Okay. And I'll give you mine. So just I'll give you a brief little synopsis of kind of what happened. I'll tell you what I think. And then I'd love to hear what you. And what state are we in? Uh, Austin, Texas. Okay. Okay. So in discussing this case, I'll I'll use su pseudonyms for the suspect and victim just to respect the yeah, privacy. Yeah, absolutely. Protect the innocent. Yeah. So. On this night, I responded to a gun hotshot call reporting a man being chased by another man. Uh, the call also mentioned uh, theft from a store. Upon my arrival, I met with Aaron, the complainant. At the convenience store, Aaron, a licensed security officer, frequently works at multiple convenience stores uh, locations in the area. However, I, uh, ho however, he wasn't on duty at this particular convenience store that night. Um, I'm familiar with Aaron. I've, I've met with him a few times on previous calls, so... I, I've seen him. He's just Aaron there hanging on, out, though. He's just he happens to be there. Yeah, yeah. So Aaron, uh, on this night, was not dressed normally as uh, he wasn't dressed as he normally was. Aaron typically wears a security uniform with a vest. Although tonight, Aaron was dressed in jean shorts, flip flops, and a hoodie. Aaron okay. stated he entered the convenience store and he noticed a young male Robert running out of the store. The store attendant indicated that Robert had stolen something. Okay. Aaron then chased Robert but couldn't catch him. So Aaron's friend who was with him, got into Aaron's vehicle and followed Robert. Robert managed to reach his apartment before they could catch him. While Robert was trying to get access into his room, Aaron's friend tackled him, causing him injury, and took Robert's backpack containing the stolen items. The backpack, which was open, clearly displaying the stolen items. Mm -hmm. uh, while Robert laid on the ground, Aaron then arrived to the hotel, so Aaron's friend went to go open the door. Meanwhile, Robert took this opportunity to stand up and go in his room. Aaron then approaches Robert's apartment door, drew a firearm, held it at the stool position, knocked on the door, demanding Robert to come outside. Mm -hmm. Robert did. Aaron holstered his gun, placed Robert's hands behind his back, and forcibly moved Robert to his car and okay. sat him there. Robert was unsure of Aaron's identity and asked him for his ID. Aaron then tried to get his friend to find his badge in his car. When he wasn't able to find it, Aaron pulls out his phone and shows a picture of himself standing next to two canine officers. Mm -hmm. This left Robert uh, confused as as Aaron neither confirmed nor denied being law enforcement. Robert he, he implied it to some degree. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So yeah. Robert begged for someone to call police. Eventually someone called, blah, blah, blah. Um, through my investigation, though, including reviewing camera footage, Robert's story aligned more with the evidence. Aaron had omitted key facts such as pulling Robert out of his home with a gun, right, right. also initiating, uh, also initially stating to me that Robert left his backpack at the convenience store, which Aaron actually took from him and then left it there. So this, so this raised suspicions that Aaron knew he had acted improperly. Mm -hmm. So due to this case's complexity, I was advised to bring both of the individuals down to detectives for questioning. Yep. Detectives reviewed the case and cited CCP 1816, which is Prevention Consequences of Theft. And sections 9.42 and 9.43, which if you're not familiar, are deadly force to prevent property and property of third person and protection of uh, a third person's property. So after this discussion, they made the decision that Aaron's actions were legal. And additionally, he wasn't impersonating a police officer. So I have been going everywhere to try and find case law and everything. The only case law I could find is state v. Uh, Moraga. And okay. in that they state the court also considered the proportionality and immediacy of the threat of the third person's property. Do you think that this security guard who was not on duty, but still a civilian and they can, they can prevent the commission of theft. Do you think that the proportionality and the immediacy of him to prevent that theft was correct? Do you think he was in the right? But now, are, let me ask you this though: Are we looking to charge the security guard? Or are we just looking to see if, if we can even bring this case against the? No, absolutely. I I put him in handcuffs because I was looking at they they assaulted him. I said with injuries, so they hurt. They tackled him. So I'm looking at robbery because they stole the backpack. They didn't just retrieve the items within the backpack. They took the backpack. So that's robbery. Mm. And then after that, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So and and that point, you know, if the backpack's open and they see it, right? They 
they could have just taken the items out, but they took his backpack too. So they stole it from they they took it from him. Yeah, it's but just, look, it's I, I, complex. It's this case is very complex. But let's let's just do a, a couple. Of, I don't know if I can answer your question completely because it sounds like it would almost need some research. But let me just answer a few questions. Number one is that you know at the end of the day, Aaron, our security guard, is a private actor, right? Mm -hmm. um, so constitutionally, as far as like, I mean, you're not you're not asking me about is this a good case against the thief, right? But it probably would be a good case at the end of the day because at, because Aaron is a private actor and we the, there is no Fourth Amendment issue. Even if he's playing the role of a cop and he thinks he's a cop, he's not a cop, and the Fourth Amendment doesn't apply to him. The second thing is that there is a case called um, State versus Jensky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's 2004 uh, by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, uh, J-E-N-S-K-E, -E, something like that. But it does say that um, that if you have a person that, that, that you know, kind of commits a crime in a sense, like, you know, you're saying robbery, right? But their intent is to hand that evidence over to the police, then it's actually not a criminal act in Texas. Um, the reason why that case came up is because you have also a uh, code of criminal procedure 38.23, which is the one which says that if a citizen or a police officer commit a crime in the act of obtaining evidence, that evidence is not admissible at trial. It's a it's a rule of procedure thing. It's not really for us on the street, but the the your courts were talking about, hey, what if somebody what if it looks like a theft, right? Like the same situation here. It looks like we're stealing this guy, this kid's backpack, because the, the thieves, right? And mm -hmm. we're committing robbery, but it's actually not a robbery. Uh, and it, could the police do the same thing? Could they chase this guy and take his backpack and arrest him, right? And with the evidence and so forth. And yeah, but we're on a different level than him. Yeah, but th th it's not a crime though. At the end of the day, it's not necessarily a crime. What what was the, was the intent by Aaron to permanently deprive him of his property and never give it to you? Right. I mean, is that really is that is he really have the the mens rea that he's committing a crime? That he okay. wants to I see that he, point. Yeah, yeah he, he, yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to steal this kid's backpack and sell on eBay like Amanda does with all her merchandise. He wants to. He's <laughs> helping you. <laughs> he's yeah. trying to help you. He's trying to play the role of a security guard and trying to recover yeah. his, you know, the, the proprietor's, you know, info. Right. So or, or merchandise. So I, I don't I just don't see. I'm not well, saying can... that the, the gun was not was lawful. I'm not saying yeah. that the tactics just... were not a civil issue. Yeah. And, not, I, and I can appreciate your point. I, I like that point a lot. I yeah. really do. So that's a great argument. The only thing I don't like is this just doesn't seem proportional for a guy who stole a Slurpee and some bagel bites. We're having someone chase him to, with a gun to his apartment. It just, it look, just, I, but Texas, you know, I look, I don't know enough about Texas law because I know that Texas is pretty much the only state that I'm, I'm uh, that you can actually use deadly force to recover property. I mean, Right. I mean, yeah, it's no. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, can, can I tell you my, my quick joke? I was talking, reasonable. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Texas, man. And, you know, look, and I'm look. If I was the prosecutor with these very few facts, you know, it's a tough situation for the security guard to be in. He's trying to get recover his property. He's trying to do the you know, it, it is a little heavy handed. And if you would have shot this kid, you know, it'd I been know. All over yeah. The, fuck. Uh, it, you know, you, so, it would have been me, but it would have been. Yeah. He might have been in prison. Because yeah. a civil jury might have found that he was excessive. But at the yeah. end of the day, you know, as far as charging with a crime, I mean, that's obviously up to you. But as far as that backpack issue, that is likely not he don't have he doesn't have the mens rea to permanently deprive him, number one. And as far as that gun issue, you're I don't know enough about the use of force and using guns to recover. Um what I know, can I tell you is it what I can tell you is it has to be reasonable. A reasonable person would have mm. to agree that what he did was reasonable. And I don't, yeah. I don't see anybody agreeing that I well, told he's, him he's and, fleeing. Yeah. He, you know, he's, 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 he's going into a home. He can barricade. Look, I, I don't know. I, I would yeah. be, I, I'd be wasting your time just trying to analyze it. Cause I just don't know enough case law on that. I'm yeah. a search and seizure guy, but as far as that search and seizure issue, the, 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 ro the robbery, I don't think occurred there. Um, that's not, I don't think against Texas law. Yeah. Right. Well, you know what? I, I appreciate your time. Next time, I'm going to give you a real good traffic stop uh, scenario. So okay. I appreciate you, though. You're welcome. Much.